Then, Sheikh, how, how do we do this? How do we deal with this now that uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government has its own stand? Yeah. The Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Alliance has its, its own stand that actually includes escalating the protests from just, not just Monday, but Thursdays, twice mm -hmm. in one week. And the it's period crazy. is not even specified, so we do not know how long this is going to take. How do we come out of this? How do we um, survive? Yeah, we, honestly, we have a challenge. And uh, because not even just two days, and uh, there was also a warning that uh, that will actually escalate to daily after, after, the two, after the two days per week. So it's going also to be daily in the, in the near future. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to call upon Kenyans just really to, to relook at themselves and ask themselves whether, they, they, whether anything can come out of this kind of a process. It is very, very critical as a country that we dialogue. But depending on what we dialogue on, are, re, are these demonstrations really about Wanjiko? Is it about the empty Sufria? Or it's about other things which are now being put at the at secondary level? What is the primary objective of these demonstrations? Uh, because we all know we have been in this country, and we know when the conversation began. What were the messages that were being sent? What are the demands that were, put, that were being put uh, forward? What has, what has changed? Why is it now we have started talking about Unga, we have started talking about, because it is catchy to Wanjiko. It immobilizes the innocent Wanjiko to come out because they believe this is our cause. And on the other side, the government is also not making it better because they are not really giving out uh, a public statements on exactly what are the steps they are taking to improve on the situation. Instead, they are busy responding to the, to the other coalition, mm -hmm. which to the Kenyans is not important. Kenyans want to know what is their president telling them about the hardship they are facing. What is their ministers and whatever in government telling them about the challenges they are facing? I went to the Northern Kenya myself. I went to Dadaab some few weeks ago. And you can't imagine you know, what is really happening. I found a family that moved from Mwajia with some few goats, by the time they arrived to Dadaab, because there was sometimes when they rained this side of the country, then they thought they were going to find the grass there. By the time they arrived there, it is already dry. So what happened? They lost all the animals they have. Now they can't go back to where they came from, and they can't live here. Now they are trying even to get into the, to the refugee camp so that they can actually get how they can survive. Is this country, is the leadership of this country understanding the, the hardships Kenyans are going through? or we are just seeing the nice things. I want to urge the leadership, please respond to the needs of the Kenyan people. Forget about what the political leaders say, you know, so that we don't waste a lot of time responding to what this other coalition have said the other day, whatever, and then we get lost in, in between. And finally, <clears throat> dialogue is only possible when people are actually raising things that are easily, that you can actually be able to address. There are things that are extremely difficult to address. There are issues that require issues of the Constitution, uh, issues to be addressed, to dealt with along those lines. There are things that have been overtaken by events. Again, I want to repeat this. When we, have, when we talk about the opening of the service, seven months, we are not being told what will be the outcome of the opening of the service. Suppose we have a decision that I don't know who is going to happen. But is it what do we want to achieve? Okay. Because in the faith that I subscribe to, Anything that you do is followed is actually, you have to have an intention. What do you want to achieve by doing this? So to us, we need to ask ourselves, what are the intentions? You know, every action that has any issue that is being raised by the political class, what is the outcome of that particular or thing that they are raising? So that we are not just talking. Then we can single out and see what, what requires dialogue. In my view, finally, what requires dialogue in this country is how do we bring the cost of living down? Anyone with an idea of that, I think it is something that can be discussed. Okay. How do we ensure that our, our education system is in a crisis? We are living a lie as a country. We have the, the junior secondary school students today not, not learning anything as, in a school. One teacher, two books in, in a whole school. So what do we expect out of this? We are going to lose a generation. We are now quiet. We have forgotten about this. And many things that are actually there, which now we are being made to believe that this country, we are, we are fighting. We want to get this. We want to get that. It's, it's a lie. Let us really talk. Let us talk to the issues okay. that are affecting the ordinary manainji of this country. Okay.